Hello everyone, this is Killenberg. Today I'm reviewing Saw 6. Now this movie starts with this trap with a man and a woman, and the man's heavy, and only one of them can survive. And how they survive is they have to take off parts of their body, and you know it weighs it. So what the woman does, is she cuts her arm off, and she actually wins. The guy tries to take off like parts of his stomach and stuff. Now in this one, they find Strom's fingerprints at the scene. You know the scene of the last one? And we find out Lindsay Perez is still alive. And for those that don't know who that is, and I actually forgot to mention this in my Saw 4 review. Perez is the cop that went up to the Billy Puppet, and then the puppet actually shot something out of its face. But yeah, we know she's alive now. Now, Jill gives Hoffman five envelopes after Kramer left her a box. And these are photos of people who need to be tested. We also see that John showed Jill that Amanda was redeemed. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Now, in this movie, we also find out that Kramer was going to do an experimental treatment, but they turned him down. Oh, get this. The insurance company's name is Umbrella Health. I can't find anything verifying this, but I'm pretty sure this is a reference to Resident Evil. For those that don't know, I'm a fan of the Resident Evil games. So the main puzzle is centered around a man named William Easton, who is an insurance executive in Umbrella. We also see a woman and her son is in a cage and watching the game. And there's a tank full of hydrofluoric acid. It has a switch that says live or die. Then a younger woman named Pamela wakes up in another cage. So yeah, we see Easton and a man named Hank who is a heavy smoker. And they breathe to see who, you know, who lives. Of course, Easton wins. Oh, Jigsaw says he has William Easton's family. So keep that in mind. Now, his puzzles are pretty interesting. There's another part where he has to grab these two levers. If he lets go, you know, one of them dies. One is a man with no family. And another one is a, an older lady, but she has a family. And the point is, you know, his company would have chosen the man because he's young and healthy. He chooses the lady. So Erickson and Perez... They have the audio tape, you know, of Baxter's trap, and they start to unscramble it. They said there was issues with Strom's fingerprints, and they acknowledge they know about Strom's death. They unscramble, and we hear that it was Mark Hoffman. So Hoffman kills everyone in the room. Perez tells him that everyone already knows. Then he put fuel all over the room, and, you know, lit it on fire to destroy the evidence. Now, Easton actually has to do this one thing where he has to choose, you know, two of the people to live. He can only choose two of them. You know, these are his fellow employees. Oh, there's something else that's interesting. Remember that envelope Amanda had in Saw 3? We find out what that is. We find out that Amanda was there to help Cecile the night Jill had the miscarriage. I thought this was pretty interesting, actually. I kind of wonder how John didn't figure this out. But yeah, now we know what the envelope was. But yeah, Mark Hoffman threatened to tell John, and that's why she killed Lynn in the third one. On with Tara and Brent, that switch didn't work when they tried to flip it. But then Easton, you know, finds them. And here's where it gets interesting. He goes up to Pamela. We find out Pamela's his sister. We find out that Tara's husband is one of the people his insurance company screwed over, and he died as a result. Tara couldn't pull the switch, but Brent did, and Easton ended up dying. But yes, yeah, bed of needles, you know, swung on him, and acid went to his body. So yeah, he's very dead. We found out Jill gets a sixth envelope, and Hoffman is her test subject. She puts a new version of the reverse bear trap on him. Now Hoffman escapes by getting his hands free, and he jams the trap in between window bars. So it still activates, it just doesn't kill him. But it does rip open one of his cheeks. So yeah, with this one, I say it's still good. Fun fact about this movie. I was actually going to see it in theaters. And I was actually there the day it came out, but I noticed there was no showings of it. So I asked the lady that was working there, and she said they might not show it. Because apparently there's people who approve the movies there, and she said they rarely choose rated R movies. And as far as I know, they never end up showing it. And this is a bit misleading too, because they had a poster of it up. But it turned out good, because I have the director's cut on DVD anyway. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Saw 6.